Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, 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 h
and that's Aaron, and that's Gaston, and we're going to be joining together to keep the music going. So in this, in this song, we're going to sing hallelujah, hallelujah, and then hallelujah. Should I try that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right, so it goes like this. Hallelujah. 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 Together. Hallelujah. 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 One more time. Hallelujah. 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 I close my eyes. Close my eyes. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. I feel humble. I feel humble. I feel blessed. I feel blessed. I feel my purpose. I feel my purpose. I make my plan. I make my plan. I will step up. I will step up. I will stand. I will stand. I will learn. I will learn. And I will teach. I will teach. I will observe. I will observe. And I will reach. I will reach. I will inspire. I will inspire. And I will pray. I will pray. Set a new standard. Set a new standard. Celebrate. We all sing hallelujah. 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 Let me hear ya, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I will be strong, I will be strong, I will exceed, I will exceed all expectations, all expectations, I will leave, I will leave, I will contribute, I will contribute, I will sing, and I will sing, I will be real, I will be real, I will be me. We all sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bring it down, bring it down. Hallelujah. 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 Just our voices now. Hallelujah. 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 Last time. Hallelujah. 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 Let's open in our prayer books to page seven. We have a few words before the candle blessing. Shabbat is flickering candles, sweet twisted challah, juice that makes my nose tickle, <laughs> giggling with my friends, a smile from the rabbi, sprinkled cookies at the oneg. Shabbat is sleeping in late, singing prayers to God, playing with seat seat strings, dancing behind the Torah, bagels with cream cheese. Shabbat is lazy afternoons, ball games on the field, snuggling with the people I love, remembering the miracles of creation. I would love to call up the Werther family to lead us in the candle blessing. Naomi and Sienna, Ben and Johanna, please come up to the, our candles over here. Lie, la 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 Ya la 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 la, ya la 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 la, ya la la la. Let's sing it all together. Ya la 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 la, 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 ya la 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 la. 
ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו, במצוותיו, וציוונו וציוונו לאט לקנר, וציוונו וציוונו לאט לקנר. וציוונו וציוונו לאן לקנר של שבת יאללה לילה לילה 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 יאללה לילה words to the Kiddush are not in this prayer book, but the words to Kiddush remind us of the sweetness of Shabbat and our generations past and our, the special tradition of celebrating Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGafen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו ורצבנו, ושבת קודשו באהבה וברצון הנחילנו, זיכרון למעשה וראשית, כי הוא יום תחילה למקראי קודש, זכר לציאת מצרים, קיבלנו ואחרת ואותנו קידשת מכל העמים בשבת קודשך באהבה וברצון הנחלתנו ברוך אתה אדוני מקדש השבת לחיים ולשלום לחיים. 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 ולשלום. Thank you so much. We're excited to celebrate with you tomorrow. All right, you can all go have a seat. Yeah, you can come. I'll call you back up. We're going to turn now to page 8 for Lecha Dodi. And this is a really fun way to, to sing Lecha Dodi, where we get to think about things that make us happy. So I'd love for everyone to think, what is one thing? I know hopefully there's many things, but what's one thing that makes you happy? And we're going to get to share three of them. But if I don't call on you, you can tell the person sitting next to you, or you can tell me during dinner, and I would, be, I would love to know what makes you happy. So we're going to call on three different people, but everyone should think about what makes them happy. Try that with us. One more time. We are happy, we are happy on this day. We are happy, we are happy on this day. All right, who would like to share what makes them happy? Oh, Asher. All right, Asher, what makes you happy? Oh, two Ashers. My friend. friends. Friends. For friends, we are happy on this day. For friends, we are happy on this day. Lecha dodi, likrat kala, ben neshava, nekabela. Oh, who has another one? All right, I'm going to go to Nava, but I want. I want to hear it from you later. Okay. Nava, what makes you happy? Family. Family. For family, we are happy on this day. For family, we are happy on this day. 
kala Bene Shabbat Lekabela Okay, how about this side? Anybody on this side? Oh, Ryan, okay. Learning. 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 That's lovely. For like that. learning, we are happy on this day. For learning, we are happy on this day. Lechadoli, lichrat kala, bene shava, nekabela. Lechadoli, lichrat kala, bene shava, nekabela. Let's all turn now to page 18. The words on page 18 are the words to the Baruch Hu, which asks us, it's saying, get, getting ready to pray. We have already done some really, really nice warm-up for our prayer, and the Baruch Hu is kind of our, our true start to our prayer service. So I'm going to invite everyone to stand if you are able. We will face the ark. Yada da 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 Am I awake? Am I prepared? Am I prepared? Are you listening to my prayer? Are you listening to my prayer? Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Yada da. Yada da da da. Yada da da da. Yada da da da. Barechu et Adonai Baruch Adonai They have a seat. We're going to turn in our prayer books to page 21. So in this book, when you see words that are italicized, when they're kind of slanty, those are words that we all read together. And then the words that are just the straight up and down, how they usually are, I'll read those words. But if you want to read all of them, you can join with me. We'll, we'll start to... Who finds the perfect colors? The orange of the sun, the white of the clouds, the red of the bird's feathers. Who paints the world? Who finds the perfect colors? The silver of the stars, the gray of the moon, the yellow of the owl's eyes. God, God is, is the, the artist who loves to paint the world. God, God is, is the, the one who finds the perfect colors. God is the one who mixes the blue of the day with the black of the night and creates the beautiful colors of the evening. Baruch Ata Adonai Hama'ariv Aravim. 
would love to call Naomi up to join with us in singing the Shema. She's going to follow that with the Vahavta. Page 28. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Shem Kevod Malchuto Leolam Baheb Baruch Shem Kevod Shem kevod malchuto leolam bare. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai. like to follow along with the Vahavta, it's in the prayer book that's in your seat on page 36. Sorry, yes. Yes. Is it just me? One, two, 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 three. 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 Arvarim ha'ele, asher anochi b'savecha, hayom alvavecha, v'shinantam l'vanecha, v'divarta b'am, v'shivtecha b'vitecha, v'vartecha v'aderech, v'shochbecha v'kumecha. Ukshartam leot al yadecha, vehayu le totafot bene necha. Ukshartam al mezuzot betecha, uvisharecha. Lemat iskeru, basitem ekomet sotai, vihitem kedoshim lohechem. Ani. Adonai Elohechem, Asher Hotei Tiechem, Me'eretz Mitzrayim, Li'yod Lachem, Elohim, Ani Adonai Elohechem. Adonai Elohechem, Amen. Yashar Koa, thank you for leading us in the Vahavta. That was beautiful. Mazel Tov on becoming a Bat Mitzvah this weekend. How exciting. Thank you. Amen to that. So we're on page 32 now in our Youth Sidur. And I want you to imagine yourself not with flippers, not with a life preserver, not with a life vest, not even with one of those cool floaties. And you're in front of the deepest, widest, longest body of water you have ever seen in your entire life. That's a scary thing. There's no bridge to cross. There's no way to swim across it. You didn't even go to the JCC for swim lessons. Fear is a powerful force. And it can make us feel like we've got feet of concrete. And it can make us very, very hesitant to go forward, to try something new, to do something that we might think is beyond what we're capable of or what we know we're capable of. So we're in the middle of spring, and before too long, it'll be summer. 
So for everyone here, as we head into summer, I want to challenge you to do three potentially scary things. I want to challenge you, encourage you is a nicer way to frame it. I want to encourage you this summer to make at least one new friend. One new friend. I want to encourage you to read at least one Jewish book. At least one Jewish book that can deepen your Jewish connection. And three, I want to encourage you to learn at least one new skill or thing that will make your life a little bit richer. And we do all of those things in the spirit of our ancient Israelites. Let's sing together, page 32. Our next prayer and piece of music is the Hashkivenu. And now that we are back very much in person, it may be a little bit more comfortable being in proximity with other people inside. We're going to do a special blessing during the Hashkivenu of all of our teachers and all of our Talmidim, all of our students. And if you could use tonight a little extra loving blessing, we encourage you wholeheartedly to stand under our giant talit, which was made just for us. It was honest to God. It was commissioned for us at Peninsula Temple Sholem. And it was one of the really neat byproducts of a family trip to Israel that I had the opportunity to lead about 10, 15 years ago. So this is our Talit, and it's made for big family services. So to hold the Talit over everybody who will be here, we actually need more than Rabbi Alvin, Rabbi Delson, Cantor Klieger, and me. So if you are feeling particularly sturdy and strong tonight, and that you maybe have a little bit of strength and blessings to give other people, I encourage you to stand on the aisles right here to hold the talit over all of us who will be under the talit. So all of our youth, all of our teachers, and anybody who could use an extra blessing. And you back row people, you're all either under this talit or holding up this talit. That goes for you too, Jen. All right, here we go. Thank you. Ooh. 
Okay. Teachers, this is your special moment where we get to bless you. All of our students right under here. Beautiful. You guys sound great. blessed with a Sabbath of peace and wholeness and rest. Join with me, please. Amen. 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 All right, we can go back to our seats. If people holding the talit up could stay there so we could fold it up together <laughs> and drop it on Micah. All right. All right. Thank you, Rabbi Alban. The next section of our service is the Amidah. It begins on page 38. And from the very beginning of the Amidah, we are connected with our matriarchs and our patriarchs. Thank you. Oh, you would be good at folding up a national flag, too. Thank you. We connect to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, the Leah. And they are the mothers and fathers of our people. In a way, 
they are the people to whom we report as the Jewish people. But I want all of us also to think in the nearer sense, to whom do you report? All of us, in a way, report to other people. Now, I'm not talking about the managerial supervisor sense of to whom do we report, but who are the people you are accountable for and who are the people you are accountable to? And think about how you have been treating those people, where you have hit the mark, where maybe you've missed the mark. And the Sabbath is a perfect time to consider and to plan on how we want to be accountable for and accountable to in the week ahead. If you're able, please rise. Once again, Amidah, page 38. Adonai, our God, you are the protector of Abraham and the one who remembers Sarah. You watched over their children and their children's children. You were their strength, and with your help, they were able to do great things. They called you the holy God and knew that you were with them whenever they needed you. Join with me, please. Help me, help God, me God, to, to also, also know you. you. Help, help me, me to be strong, strong and brave. brave. Teach me to be holy. Let me rest each Shabbat and help me see the beautiful world around me. Help me find the words to thank you, Adonai, my God. Teach me your peace and help me be a peacemaker for all the world. We're going to take some moments for silent prayer. Feel free to either to pray silently sitting down or standing up. On page 52. Yehu Leratzon Im Refi Im Refi Vehegyon Libi Lefanecha Yehu le ratzon im refi im refi vehegyon libi lefanecha Adonai tzuri Adonai tzuri 
We're going to sing the prayer for healing now, and as is our minhag, we give our community the opportunity to say the name of the person that they are praying for who is in need of healing of spirit or healing of body. And if you'd like to share the connection you have to that person, please feel free. I've got the microphone here. If anyone would like to say a person's name on this side of the sanctuary, just give me the nod. Uh, my friend Jerry Jenkins and his daughter Cassie. David Kobe. Devin Brightheart. My friend's husband, Tony Taylor. Father Ed Schneider. Wendy Brewster. At a Morgan Elizabeth Child and Neil G. To those names we add Jack Pichon, Leon Levy, Bill Glatt. Andrea Sobel, Sylvia Phillips, Marty Martinez, Dwight Oxford, Carol and Don Scolini, Richard Koss, Florence Glatt, Elsie Burgold, Wendy Fetterman, Esther Hollander, Ed Martin, Cole Martin, Craig Martin, and Leslie Martin, Gina Sadiq, Jennifer Lack, Burton Boxerman, Theo Kramer, Claudia Lachance, Frida Klieger, Shoshana Bad Chaim Veshena, Paul Raffer, Peter Deutsch, Marion Klieger, Peter Powell, Eve Bauer, Cami Klein, 
Atticus Pearson, Jerry Harris, Tracy Vaca, Jacqueline Fields, Sam Chan, Naomi Spitzer, Alex Newton, Willie Herring, Dorothy Creeks, and Esther Dover. Baruch Ata Adonai, Rofe HaCholim. Dear God of our ancestors, help us renew our faith. Help us renew our faith. Grant us a perfect healing. Grant us a perfect healing. Bring peace to all our days. Bring peace to all our days. El na refana la refana la nu. Restore our strength of body. Restore our strength of body. Help clarify our mind. Help clarify our mind. Refresh our tired spirit. Refresh our tired spirits. Rejuvenate our life. Rejuvenate our life. Thank you for all these blessings. blessings Throughout our day and night Throughout our day and night We celebrate the journey We celebrate the journey This precious gift called life This precious gift called life <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. It's really nice to see all of your faces of all different ages. Tonight, I'm going to tell you a story, and I want you to transport yourselves to a time long, long ago in a place far, far away, a kingdom to be exact. It had many beautiful green lands and fields and, and a castle and many houses, and it was a lovely kingdom with a village and all the place for royalty who was there. And of course, any kingdom needs a king and a queen. So there was a king and a queen who ruled over this kingdom, and they had ruled for, for several, several years at this point. And the people in this kingdom, all the people who lived there, became really excited when they learned that the king and the queen were expecting a child a prince, a little boy, to be exact. They rejoiced that the kingdom was going to be filled with this new energy, this new life, literally. And they hoped that this prince would grow up to be strong and would be kind and all of the qualities that you need in a prince and then eventually a king. So this little prince was born, and when the queen and the king would look at their little baby, they would see how wonderful he was, and they would say to themselves, oh, we are just so blessed. And the, the little prince grew and grew and reached his seventh birthday. By this time, the king and the queen and everyone in the town could tell that there was something that wasn't quite right with this prince. The problem was that although this prince had already turned seven years old, this prince wasn't learning 
the Aleph Bet. The prince knew not a single letter of the Aleph Bet, and people started to get really concerned that this prince was incapable of learning the Aleph Bet. And, okay, the king and the queen, they tried not to panic. They, they got their best sages in their kingdom, and they wanted all their sages to come up with ideas for how they could teach the prince how to learn the Aleph Bet. Okay, the first sage had a plan. So the king brought this first sage to the castle, and this first sage said, you know what, I think that the prince isn't learning because he's distracted. That's it, he's distracted. There's too much going on with all the lessons and with all the other kids, and so we need to place the prince in a room where there are no pictures, no toys, no board for writing. There's not even going to be a window to look out to the outside world. And this prince is going to learn with me, the sage, and that's, that's, it's going to work. So the prince and the sage learned together. There was nothing in the room, just two pillows where they each sat on it, and they would learn together. After a few weeks, the king was curious to learn how his prince son was doing, and he called the first sage into his palace, and he said, sage number one, please tell me, how is my son learning? He must know the Torah, all the Torah by now, right? Like he's learned his alphabet, he's ready to learn Torah, and the first sage uh, kind of looked at him and said, well, I thought this plan would work. No distractions, no art, no windows, nothing in the classroom, just me and him learning together. And I have to tell you that, um, well, while your prince is, is really handsome, he's really strong, he's really sweet-tempered, but I fear to tell you that your son, the prince, he just cannot learn. I, the, nothing I do is working. And the king and the queen were angered to hear this, and they said, out of my kingdom, get out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. Of course the prince, our son, can learn. They called the second sage in. The second sage came forward and said, king and queen, you know what? I know what it is. Your son, the prince, isn't learning because he needs to be learning with other kids. He's lonely. There's not enough stimulation for him. He's not able to learn from everyone else who's learning with him. What we need to do is build a giant school. We need to invite all of the kids, ki kids in the kingdom to learn with your prince, and it's going to work. So um, this, they, they built this beautiful school, the room that had been empty of all distractions. It was filled with all this commotion, all these decorations, and most importantly, all these kids, and they learned like that for a couple of weeks. After a couple of weeks, the king and the queen called upon the second sage, and they said, okay, is this working? Has my son learned the Aleph Bet? Is he ready to study Torah now that he's been learning with all these other kids? And the second sage looked at the king and looked at the queen and said, your son is strong, and your son is sweet-tempered, and I really enjoyed learning with him, but the problem is it's not working. He still doesn't even know a single letter. He's not able to learn. I'm really sorry. And the king and the queen, again, were so angry. They said, I know this isn't true. I know my prince can learn the Aleph Bet. He's just as smart as anyone else. Get out of my kingdom. Okay, they've gone through sage one, sage two. They call upon sage three. Sage three has an idea, a different idea. He says, bring this prince to me. I, I know what it is. Your royal highness, your prince, he needs to be outdoors. He needs to learn in the sunshine. All of the beautiful air is going to enliven his soul, and he's going to be able to take it all in. And finally, he's going to get to learn the Aleph Bet and be ready to study Torah. That's what he needs. He needs the stimulation of, out, of the outdoors. So each morning, each morning, the third sage and the prince would go outside together. They would spend all day learning. They would sit on the grass. They would look up at the sunshine. It was really marvelous, like outdoor school, like we did in youth education last year. Well, they developed healthy tans, but the problem was that after weeks, what do you think was happening? Nothing. I see shaking heads. This little prince still wasn't learning the Aleph Bet. So the third sage went to the king and queen and said, Your Royal Highnesses, 
I'm really sorry, but your, your son, the prince, he is strong and he is sweet-tempered, but he just can't learn. It's not going to work. The king and the queen were more sad than they had ever been before. They were really depressed. They had big dreams for their prince who was going to learn all of Torah and be able to read documents and do all the important work that you have to do when you eventually become king. And they didn't know what to do. They had this prince and they didn't know if he was ever going to grow up and be able to read and become the king. The king was so depressed that he began taking rides alone into the countryside. He just needed time to clear his head, to think and get some space. So one day he got in his carriage and he rode out into the countryside. He stopped in a different town. He got out of his carriage and he was walking around this town and he came upon a musician on the side of the road, a begging musician who was playing, busking for, for change. And there was something about this musician on the side of the road that made the king stop and think and pay attention to him. There was something that made him feel very comfortable with this musician. The musician looked at him and said, what's wrong? I can, I can tell you're really upset. What's going on? And the king thought to himself, why am I talking to this random person on the side of the road? But what the heck? I have no one else to talk to. I need to express myself. He said, well, I have this son, I'm a king, he's a prince, and I've just tried everything. He can't learn any of the Aleph Bet. He's never going to learn the Torah, and definitely he's never going to be able to become king. And the musician said, well, I have an idea. And the king was like, um, who are you? Why am I talking to you? But what the heck, what's your idea? And the musician said, I think that the prince can learn in song. And the king said, that is such a silly idea. It's never going to work, but what the heck? Nothing else has worked. Let us try it. And the king looked back to the musician and said, why do you think this is going to work? I don't understand. Learning in song, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. And the song musician looked back, back at him and said this, A songster I am and music's my skill. A life without song would give me a chill. I come from a land where singing's the rule. We sing while we play. We sing while we're in school. We sing as we work. We sing as we pray. The songs fill our lives with joy every day. The king heard this song. He thought, okay, what the heck? This guy is crazy enough. Maybe it's going to work. He brought him back to his palace, and he introduced the musician to his prince, his prince son, and they started learning together. They joined together every single day. And you could tell instantly they had a connection. They really enjoyed being together, this musician and the prince. The, pr the musician only spoke to the prince in, you guessed it, song. Every lesson would be in musical form. So this is how it would go. Um, they were singing the Olive Bet in song. So the musician would look at the prince and say, who am I? And the prince would say, you are Olaf. And the musician would say, who am I? And the prince would say, Tav is my name, right? That's how he learned the Olaf bet. And while I am last, I am Tav. I am the letter that the word Torah begins with. And soon the young prince was learning the Aleph Bet. And not only that, he was putting words together and he was putting sentences together. And he was even able to start thinking about what the words of the Torah actually mean. And it was all through music, just like that. This went on for several weeks. And the king, like he had done with all the other sages, brought the musician in and wanted to know how the progress of the prince was going. And... The musician had some good news to tell the king. 
The king was expecting the worst, right? He had met with all these sages who couldn't do anything. But unlike these sages, the musician said to him, um, you know what? I have something to show you. I'm actually going to bring forth the prince, and you're going to be so excited and surprised to find what you're about to see. And the prince walked in. He was carrying a Torah, and you could just see his, eye, his eyes were lit up, and he was so excited to tell his father what he had learned. He said, let me show you, father, said the prince, and he began to sing the very first letters of the Torah, Brashit. And he kept going, singing and singing and singing. To hear the prince sing the beauty of the words of Torah was all that the king and the queen could ever want. It was incredible. Musician, you have done it. You have done this thing that no one else was able to do. You will forever earn a high place in my court. And it was amazing. And guess what happened? The prince kept learning. He loved learning Torah. He loved talking about Torah. He was smart, and he thought through what the words meant, and he loved having discussions about the Torah all in song. And he grew up, and he continued to be strong, and he continued to be sweet-tempered, but beyond that, he was wise. And as he grew older, by the time he was a young man, he was finally ready, like the king and the queen had always wanted for him. He was finally ready to what? Become king himself. And by his side, as he took on this new role, was the ki original king, his father, and the queen. And they looked at him. And at that point, they didn't even remember how silly they had originally thought the idea of learning Torah in song was. I share that story with you all tonight because we are here to publicly appreciate all of our incredible youth education teachers. We have some here, we have some back there. We have a few of our madrachim here with us. The beauty of, and the importance of being a teacher is what this story teaches us, which is that every child is unique. The little prince learned in a different way from how other children may have learned. But once he could learn in song, look at all the wisdom that flew from his mind, and he was able to grow up and become a wise, wise king. Our youth education teachers have brought patience, and they have brought care and attention to all of our kids who are all unique here at Peninsula Temple Shalom. And I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all for the important work that you do in bringing Judaism and bringing compassion and bringing a sense of soul to all of our youngest people here at our holy temple. So the clergy and I are going to invite all of our teachers and all of our madrachim up to our bima. And we're going to invite you for a special priestly blessing to just send you off with peace and show how much we care about you. Aleph, bet, bet. <laughs> Gimel, dalet, hey. Please rise. Let's all come closer. Closer. Come on. There we go. May God bless you. May God watch over you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Oh, 
May God lift God's may God lift God's face toward you and may God grant you everlasting shalom which means peace, wholeness and completeness. And together we say amen. amen. Thank you. You can all have a seat. It's not so in a special time in our Jewish calendar. You can all take a seat. We find ourselves in between the holidays of Passover and Shavuot, the holiday of freedom. You all pr probably know Passover pretty well, but the holiday of Shavuot celebrates our revelation, our moment of revelation, our moment of receiving Torah on Mount Sinai. And the period between Passover and Shavuot is called the Omer. It is 49 days. It is traditionally a harvest time where we count every single one of those 49 days. This idea is that we're kind of walking up towards the grand moment of receiving Torah on Mount Sinai. So it is traditional actually every day of the Omer, but especially for us when we're here on a Friday night, to uh, recite the traditional blessing for marking the Omer. So I am going to um, do it, and I'll invite all of you to repeat after me so that we can all say it together. So today we are in, we are entering, we just entered at sundown, almost, the 23rd day of the Omer. So we start by saying, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. You can all repeat. Asher Kirishanu B'mitzvot Tav. Vitzivanu, all spirat haomer, and that means blessed are you, Adonai, Adonai, our God, who has sanctified us with the commandments and commanded us concerning the counting of the omer. And then we count the specific twenty-third day, Hayom Shlosha Esrim Yom Shehem, Shlosha Esrim Yom Shehem, Shlosha Shavuot. Ushne Yamim La Omer. Today is 23 days, which is three weeks and two days of the Omer. Amen. All right. Following that, we come to a different moment in our service in which we get ready to think about those in our lives who are no longer with us and whose memory instead is with us this Shabbat. In just a moment, that means we're about to say uh, Mourner's Kaddish. It is on page 108 in this prayer book. Before we get to that, though, we have a really beautiful tradition at our Temple Shalom community, which is that if you are here to recite um, Kaddish for anyone, if, or if you're just remembering someone who has passed away um, this Shabbat, then you will have the opportunity now. I'll come around with the microphone, and if you just want to share their name and a short memory about them, we'd love to hear it so that we can be thinking about them um, as our community with you. So where, where is our mic? Our mic is here. To Phil Geisler, who was a wonderful teacher and was such a huge loss this year. Thanks. I'm saying Kaddish for my mom, 
uh, Lotta Bainzer, and uh, she died 20 years ago this week. And even though it's 20 years ago, every now and then I still, something happens or I think of something and I say, gee, I wish I could call my mom. Yeah. <laughs> so I miss her. Thanks. My mother-in-law, Tilly Barron. Unfortunately, her children, my wife and brother-in-law, are deceased, but I have a plan that as long as I'm able to, I want to make sure her name gets remembered. Thanks, Josh. No? Uh, so my parents had a son who died the year before I was born. And um, as it happens, this is the yurt site for him. And um, his name was Michael, and he is who our son Michael is named for. Thanks. In addition to all those names, we are also thinking tonight of Betty Greenfield and Barbara Rosenblatt, who passed away in the last 30 days, and tonight we are thinking of Shloshim for them. We are also thinking of the following people who, whose yard site is this Shabbat, who passed away in this week in years past. They are Tilly Barron, Mary Bloom, Lorraine Boardman, Lena Cohen, Peggy Dover, Aaron Ehrlich, Mary Ann Ehrman, Sheila Feuchwang, Juliet Goldman, James Goodwin, Dottie Jasukunis, Irving Doc Levin, Katie Loctov, Francis Mactinger, Lotta Mainzer, Edith Markowski, Maureen Mead, Jacques Moseri, Lawrence Neinstein, Marcia Miguel Grant, Morris Ojena, Seidel Resnick Singer, Morris Rappaport, Erica Steinberger, Irving Walks, Dolly Walks, Walter Lee Weinberg, Isidore Wexler, and Melvin Maurice Wilner. As we're about to recite Mourner's Kaddish, which is again on page 108, I will first invite all of our mourners to rise so that we can recognize you as mourners. And then I'll invite everyone else to rise. Page 108. Yit gadal ve yit kadash me raba, be ama zivra hrute ve amlich mahute, be chayahon uvio mehon uve chaye de ho bait Yisrael. Bagala vizman kariv imru amen. Yehe shme raba mevarach le alam ulame omaya. Yit barach viet tabach viet paar viet romam viet not say. Viet hadar viet hale viet halal shmeid kudasha brihu. Le elam in ko birchata ve shirata. Tush bechata ve nehemata. Dami ram be alma ve imru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shamaya, ve chayim alenu ve alko yisrael, ve imru, amen. O se shalom, 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 vim romavu ya ha se shalom, ha alenu ve alko yisrael. Veimeru, amen. We're going to enter into our closing song in just a moment. But before I do that, I have a few announcements. First of all, I want to thank all of our musicians who are with us tonight. We have Isaac Zones. Thank you very much. We have Aaron Shaw and Gaston Bernstein. I also want to thank um, all of our teachers who are here and all of our marjachim, the clergy who I led with, um, and 
Finally, if you have signed up for dinner, we will continue with dinner right in the social hall following our service. And I'm wishing you all, our kids are ready back there, and I'm wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom. Our closing song this evening is Oh Say Shalom. I don't think we need our books for this. We can put the books <laughs> down. We can put our arm around the person next to us, get a little sway going. Oh Say Shalom Bim Roma. Hallelujah, I say shalom, Aleinu. Oh, say shalom, bim roma. Hallelujah, I say shalom, Aleinu. Oh, say shalom, bim roma. Hallelujah, I say shalom. Shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu ve'alko Yisrael. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu ve'alko Yisrael. Oh, se shalom bim roma. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We want to do mozi. We're gonna do mozi. We're gonna do mozi. Rabbi Feeder style. <laughs> Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Ha Motzi Lechem Min Haaretz Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yase Shalom. Yase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu Ve'alko Yisrael. Ah! 